All right, so we are back. It's another six views. You know what I'm saying? We're back here at the Youngsterdam Lounge. You know, big respect for letting us use the spot over here at 529 Young Street. Um, you know, spot for people to be able to rent so that they can get their events on. You know, sporting events, dance events, anything of, of, of that nature, hit them up at Youngsterdam underscore lounge. But we have a special, special um, guest that we have in, 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 the, in the place today. And like I said with other episodes, the six views is something where we like to go behind the scenes um, rather than just speaking to, to rappers and different and and. Uh, and, and singers and stuff like we speak to on the we love hip-hop podcast um we like to speak with more like tastemakers people behind the scenes and people who are just doing big things in, mm. especially in toronto all right so with no further ado i have tay lee in the building right um now for people who don't know who tay lee is uh, i've been on the gram i be surfing the gram and i and i see tay lee's picks up there for a lot of different modeling gigs and stuff like that right and the like ratio just be like through the roof right and that right there is to me one of the indicators that this person is doing this professionally you know what i'm saying um rather than just being an instagram model right so now it's cold outside or it was cold outside it was kind of warm today <laughs> for you for somebody like for people from the outside who's like yo tay lee's life is so lit what was your weekend like my weekend yeah like this weekend in particular honestly i work like i do hair i do hair like for the most part and mm -hmm. then i also do like bottle surfing that type of thing but i try to stay as busy as possible so this weekend i did a shoot for my birthday because it's coming up okay um but right before that i did hair right after that i made a wig like it was really just like trying to stay as busy as possible Dope, dope, yeah. dope, 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 dope. And like your 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 IG following is like super high, right? Mm -hmm. Was your following high like that before you started doing the mon the modeling and stuff more professionally? No, not well. I mean, I always had like a little following, like you know, a mm -hmm. little buzz or whatever. But it wasn't nothing serious until I actually started. Like I did my first shoot with Max, and okay. then after I did my shoot, it was like everyone was like, "Yo, you're a model. You're a model." I'm like, nah, I just take pictures. Like you know. All right. So. From me doing that and just like being consistent with it, it kind of just built a following. And then I started like actually going out and meeting people, like networking with people. And then from that, it was just like a bigger and bigger following. Dope, dope. Traveling and that type of thing, yeah. What made you want to get into it in the first place? Um, that's a good question. I think I was just like um, feeling myself at a point. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yo, let me take some pictures. And so. Yeah, I just took pictures and then I was like, okay, I can get paid from this. That's literally how I started everything. I started doing hair. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah, TNT too, I forgot. Okay, so um, when I started taking it seriously, because I was taking pictures, just taking pictures and posting it, it wasn't nothing. Right. And then um, my uh, business partner, Talents, she messaged me and she was like, um, yo, I see, you know, you're doing this, like you're getting followers from it, whatever, let's do it together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sounds good. So we did this, um, we teamed up, we made this whole TNT thing, Taylor and Talents or okay. Tal Talents and Taylor, however you want to flip it. And um, yeah, from that, we just started doing bookings together. Everything was like together, half and half type thing. And yeah, she, we were like going at it strong, but she got pregnant like last year. So she's kind of been like, you know, yeah. but yeah, we're coming back with it strong. Okay. So like even with the bookings and stuff, you guys were like booking your own like shoots and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Like we were, we would pay for a lot of them. Um, like just try to like get as much contact with content as we can. As we can. Mm -hmm. And like just trying to like get out there with it. We paid for everything most of the time and yeah. like traveling, like we like put thought into everything that we did mm -hmm. yeah dope 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 tell me what your first shoot was like, like give us like the setting my like, first photo shoot yeah your first photo shoot like give me the setting like you know the nerves that were going on inside mm -hmm. of you like give me that that scenario right there it was kind of like um i don't know what i was doing he just told me i remember max told me bring three outfits and i was like okay i see what's on his page so i'm like the girls on this page are wearing like bikinis and stuff so i wear bikinis but at the same time i wasn't comfortable with myself and my body like you know mm -hmm. so i'm like okay i'm just gonna bring a few things i ended up wearing like jeans and a t-shirt like and um some tims right and that was my first shoe and i was like i don't know i i liked it but i didn't think i liked it like as much as like the feedback that i got 
I didn't think it was as lit as like people were telling me it was type mm. thing, you know? Yeah. Was it like, I know a lot of people in their head and I, I've gone through this myself, when you have like a like an interview or a shoot or something to do, mm-hmm. you envision it being a certain way, mm-hmm. and then when you get there, it's different. Was it? Did you have that experience? Um. Yeah, I guess because okay, when I was going into doing the shoot, mm-hmm. I didn't think it was gonna be like I didn't picture like I pictured the studio, but I pictured like you know a completely different type of studio. Yeah. So when I went there. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, I was just like, I was really, really nervous. I didn't know what to do. Mm. I asked him, like, how should I pose? What should I do? And, like, he was like, he directed me the entire time. Like, I was, I feel like if I look at my pictures now, compared to, like, back then, yeah. you could tell, like, I was, did not know what the hell I was doing at all. Yeah. Like, at all. But, yeah, like, for the most part, I feel like it, it I don't know. I guess, yeah, it went not exactly how I wanted to go mm-hmm. or how I thought it would go, but... It worked out in the end. So it's still a good experience yeah, at the end of the good day. Experience. So now I see also you have a second page dedicated to hair, right? And mm-hmm. you mentioned even earlier that you do hair. Mm-hmm. So tell us about that that page and like, um, you know, just what, what what's going on with that and like that business. Okay, so I have a hair page. It's Taylor Slade Me, mm-hmm. and um, I just uh, I'm working right now on like actually selling hair, like actual hair but it's a lot of work (laughs) and so um yeah i do like mostly like frontals closures laces like Mm -hmm. anything like wigs sew-ins those type of things that's what i really like focus on the most um i do a lot of girls in toronto mostly but yeah like i don't know working on selling the hair hopefully this year it's out because i finally found someone i'm like fucking with but Mm -hmm. Yeah, like hopefully that's all out by the end of this year, the latest. Like, yeah. Yeah, and even like just to stay on 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 that for a second, mm-hmm. right? Now, like as a beautiful black woman, right? Mm-hmm. Um, with the whole hair industry, that's like a big big deal, mm-hmm. right? And then you got like, um, you know, Meek Mill and stuff like that making statements about lace fronts <laughs> and all that stuff in his Instagram, right? <laughs> Can you tell us about some of the struggles that black women go through when it comes to hair, being able to get, like, to get hair, all just all the different stuff. Give me, like, some of the struggles. Okay. First, shout out to Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shout out to Meek Mill still, regardless. You know, yeah. <laughs> hit me up. Anyways, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so he, first of all, he, he, I guess he said that he had a bad experience with hair mm-hmm. and how, like, while he was having sex or whatever, her wig fell off or whatever the case. Mm. If she came to me, it wouldn't have the. It wouldn't be that problem. <laughs> Let me just, it, she wouldn't have had that problem. But yeah. um, I feel like if it's installed properly, it's almost undetectable. Like you can't really tell that she's wearing a wig or whatever. Like you can kind of guess nowadays because everyone's wearing a wig. Like you know what I mean. But yeah. for the most part, if it's done properly, it's it's undetectable. And then I don't feel like um, guys should really be saying like, okay girls can't wear wigs now or like leave wigs in 2018 or whatever the case yeah. because at the end of the day niggas is paying 11 12 bands for a hairline right now so if you guys Shout could out go Nick, you know Tory lanes uh but if you could um go and pick up a lace front and it would be undetectable i'm pretty sure they would be buying lace fronts at this point yeah so like why are you guys really judging at the end of the day um some girls it's not it's not always like that we have to wear wigs mm-hmm it's just that it's protective it helps your hair grow it's easy you mm-hmm. get up you put mm-hmm. it on you take it off at night if you have to if you want to mm-hmm. like you know it's it's the easy thing to do it's like i don't know like when a nigga puts his chain on type thing like you know like <laughs> it's like it adds a little you know yeah no i'm feeling it's, that i'm feeling that one of those and even like with with getting gigs right mm-hmm. um in the modeling world um acting and different things like that as a dark-skinned woman, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have struggles with getting gigs over light-skinned women or white women? No, 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 not really. Um, I feel like I am more okay. The audience that I have is like geared towards me because I built the following, mm-hmm, like you know. Mm-hmm. So like, um, anyone that books me is already looking for me or something like me, like you know what I mean. Yeah. So. It's like, it would be different if I'm, like, 
reaching out to people or whatever i haven't really like attempted to reach out to anyone like that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like anyone big yet but um like for the most part all the bookings that i get booked for or i say yes or no to like i literally get dms or emails or whatever and saying like okay this is what we want to do we want to collab like yeah. are you going to be okay with it do you want to come through or whatever and i'll just be like yes and i'll ask for all the details and everything mm-hmm. and then i'll just say yes or no but like for the most part all the things are already geared towards me like they've seen videos that i've done yeah. they see photo shoots i've done and so they know like they kind of have like an understanding of like what i'm comfortable with mm-hmm. and so they know like i think that's like the good thing about instagram it's like it's not like i'm handing in a resume yeah. and you just got to read like okay she did this whatever but like you're literally getting a visual of what things that i've done things that i've like i promote myself mm-hmm. doing so you, like when you hit me up you already know like okay yeah she could fit this part or yeah. you know yeah it's like the portfolio is like right there in their exactly hands. Yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so let's go back a little bit mm-hmm. tell me about growing up what as, as i usually ask rappers on the on the, on the we love hip-hop podcast right mm-hmm. what ends did you grow up in as they say <laughs> <coughs> um, so i grew Sorry. up in rexdale mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um shout out to rex yeah shout out to rex um yeah i grew up in rexdale uh let me see so i grew up pretty i, I grew up pretty good actually i wasn't born and raised like in the hood part mm-hmm. of rex though but i was born and raised in rex though i wasn't really like introduced to the hood side until like um middle school i met g tips rp my nigga RP. but yeah i met g tips and then from there it was like i met the rest of the mandem type mm. thing like you know and so i went to school in the hood pretty much and then from that it was just like yeah, like you just meet a bunch of people, but living in the Rex is lit, honestly. It, like, it has its its moments where yeah. it's, like, fucked up. You see a lot of shit, like, you know, and you learn a lot of things. A lot of people cross you. They, like, you know, it's it's life. Anywhere you go, you're going to have the same shit, the same thing going on. But um, growing up in the Rex is, like, it's just lit. Like, when you're, when you're there, if you feel love, like, it feels like... I don't know, it feels kind of homey, like it's comfortable mm-hmm. until a certain time, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> it's it's kind of comfortable, though, like, and then, um, uh, like, yeah, there's, like, obviously the regular hood shit that you see every now and then, but for the most part, you feel, you feel safe in a way, yeah. quote, unquote, yeah. What's the craziest thing you ever seen in the Rex? Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see. I gotta think about this one. Without, like, you know, putting anybody out there kind of thing. Um, Craziest thing I've seen in the Brex. Bruh. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I've seen some crazy fights. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. Um, Bro, I remember one time I was in high school and... (laughs) I feel like this is a story time right now. Okay. I remember one time I was in high school and... It was literally like one girl fighting the whole school. Like I don't even know what I'm talking about, man. There's one time when this girl was fighting the whole school, pretty much. Like, okay. And so she had like a a whole lot of beef around her, whatever the case. And then it started in like the foyer, and it took it to like, yeah, yeah. She knows <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> but um, it started in like the foyer of West Humber, which is where I went, mm-hmm. and then it ended up like in the fields behind the towns like it was it was crazy and then i remember her whole weave got ripped out of her head like wow. and she just installed it the day before it was crazy wow you didn't get to install it no nah, i didn't install it no, but my sure. but my girl installed it though shout out to her well you know what? it was it you know but the thing is the thing is, <laughs> the thing is it was in there tight i'm mm-hmm. not gonna like oh i'm not this or anything it was in there tight i know it was in there tight because she was getting pulled like when i told you she was fighting all day wow. like that hair was getting pulled out for a minute it, it was, was like, like the last fight. fight that it came out so i know for sure it was in there tight wow shout she didn't come back until the weave back it was back in her head though shout out to her wow 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 <laughs> but crazy. yeah some crazy things just you know that's crazy the least <laughs> um what's one of the most valuable lessons that you've learned in the rex or coming from the rex um holy most valuable lessons um that's a good question yeah yeah you could chime in um i would say you know about trust and loyalty trust and loyalty i was i was thinking something close to that you know there's been a lot of incidents where you see people around that things happen to them 
and even though it might not lead to you personally, you learn from You learn from it, just from seeing it. Facts. Yeah. Good. There's a lot of disloyal people out there. Just say it. So my circle's really small. Because of the regs, probably, actually, I think I feel I catch on to things a lot mm-hmm. sooner. Like, a lot of people, um, they disguise it very well. Mm. So, you know, they're, wrong, they're around for a little bit longer than others. But, yeah, like, just picking up on, like, weird vibes and um, people that um, are, like, wolves in sheep clothing, yeah. in a sense. Like, you know? And then also being very particular with like who you bring yourself around Mm -hmm. like um who you let know certain things who you like could say okay yeah i live here i go here to do my nails i go here like small things like that little things like that like it might not seem like a lot but all those little things that you can let someone in on Mm -hmm. they they all come together and make you like you know what i mean so it's like little things that i just can't really let people see like you know what song is that when they're like yo um, I can't let you little Dirk. I can't let you see. Th- I can't let you see this. I can't let you be around for this or whatever. Like shit. Like it's Men it's real shit. Bikes. It's real yeah. talk. Like you can't really let everyone in and let everyone see um, what you're doing. Okay. For, yeah. And even like um, to touch to stay on that, but outside of the Rex, mm-hmm. right? With like in the modeling world, and you start getting out into the world, and you're going into you know different places to do shoots and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. And couple that with all the talk that, you know, um, that's been going on in the news with man's like R. Kelly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, getting, you know, where, where people are muting him. Harvey Weinstein has a bunch of charges against him and more, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever been in one of those hashtag Me Too situations? Um, no, not, okay. There was a recent situation and I don't want to like discredit anyone or anything, but mm-hmm. like it wasn't one of those where it was like, um, the guy was like trying to touch me or anything like that you know but like i just felt like he overstepped his boundaries it was a photographer that's in toronto it's not max if anyone's put it's like it's not max let me just put that out there it's not max but um there was a photographer recently that um i decided to collab with another photographer from Mm -hmm. miami and we ended up doing a nude shoot and so we did the nude shoot or whatever and then he um the toronto photographer he asked me prior to me doing the shoot, if mm-hmm. I would be okay with doing a new shoot with him. And I said no, just because I didn't feel like he was like, he was like an up and coming photographer. Yeah. It's not that I didn't see the potential in him. It's just that I didn't feel like comfortable doing that type of shoot with you. Like, you know, right, right. so yeah, um, he just like, when he posted the pictures or like the preview of the pictures or whatever, he was like, he slid in my DMs and he was like, honestly, I think you're a liar. Da, da, da. Like he did the most, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, it's not that serious. Like I just didn't do a nude shoot with you, and he was like so like upset that I didn't go n- nude with him, and I was like, like, that just threw me off a little bit. So I'm like, I don't know if I should like, cause I heard things about him, but mm-hmm. he's never acted in a way towards me, like right. you know. So I was like, okay, I hear things about people all the time. I always give people like their fair chance or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, when he was, like, so mad that I didn't go nude with him, I was, it kind of, like, played back in my mind, like, okay, people were telling me that this this is the sh- how you were acting with them, like, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, is that why? Or, like, I don't know. But, like, that's the only real situation that I've been in where I felt, like, discomfort. Yeah. Other than that, I try to stick to, like, the same type of photographers and mm-hmm. videographers or whatever. Good, good, mm-hmm. good, good. And it's, it's, it's something that's... I feel is going to continue happening in the game, mm-hmm. but it's going to have more of a spotlight on it because of all of the spotlights that have been on these gen- gentlemen that we were talking about mm-hmm. before, right? Um, and even I was like, you know, going through your IG, I see you had a quote, and you were used to used to do a lot of different quotes, mm-hmm. right? Just like the white background with the with the quote, yeah, right? Yeah. And one of them you had um, said, "Never trade respect for attention." Mm-hmm. So tell us tell us about that. You know what I mean? Like, what inspired that quote right there? Um, I just feel like, I just feel like a lot of people will go the extra mile Mm -hmm. to get a like. And it's like, me being in the modeling industry or whatever, I've dealt with all the negative and the negative parts of it. People, especially in Toronto, as soon as you start doing things, like if I post a picture on my gram half naked or whatever, they automatically assume, you take a flight. That's the least. You take a flight. Let's say you take... The past year, I, I traveled a lot. So right. let's say you take a flight or whatever. 
in Toronto, they're thinking, okay, what is she doing to get that money? Whatever. Like, yeah. first of all, I do hair. I don't promote it as much as I should, and I'm gonna like get back on that. Mm-hmm. But um, I do hair, so a lot of my money comes from doing hair. I also do bottle service and whatever else I might do on the side or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I make enough money for me to support myself taking flights. Yeah. But people see things that they're gonna see my Instagram, see that like a lot of times I'm half naked, and then from that they're gonna be like, okay, you know what? She's probably a telly thing. She's mm. probably stripping. She's probably doing this, like you know. Yeah. And then people take that and they run with it. Like they set it in their mind, like okay, you know, this is what she's doing. That I didn't, you never heard from me yeah. or from anyone that like is like a close associate of me, like you know. But you took from that whatever and just ran with it, like you know. Yeah. So I'm just like. I just, I don't, it's just like a whole negative energy where it's like, just don't, you can't lose yourself in doing what, what you're doing to make money. Like, yeah, I might be here on Instagram half naked or whatever, but at the end of the day, you can't come up to me and be like, listen, I want to fuck. Like, what's good? like, you know, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know, let's do it. Like, it's not like, I'm not that type of person, yeah. you know, but you see what, just don't lose yourself. Like, don't be like, okay, you know what? I'm playing this part on Instagram. I'm going to play this part in real life. Like, mm. you know, you could, you can like separate your your job from like your real life if that makes sense like yeah, i don't know just don't facts. lose yourself in it that's what i mean by it yeah a few more questions here mm-hmm. now I'm, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit right now for uh, for an attractive woman like yourself right mm-hmm. and you're out there you're you're, you're 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 doing the modeling thing you got people on the gram liking your shit all the time just like so people see you out there mm-hmm. now for guys who want to approach you what does a guy have to do when he approaches you where you say yes i'm going to give you my number um, that's a run into me, honestly. Run mm-hmm. into me, um, engage in conversation, and the conversation has to be thick. Like, I don't know. For me, like, um, niggas try to all at me all the time. Like, mm-hmm. So it's like, um, I don't really give people the time of day until I've seen them in person. We had a conversation, and I'm home thinking about that conversation. Like, if, if you leave an impression like that I'll probably like message you and be like okay what is it yeah. I mean, like for me when I'm interested in someone I will tell you like I'm interested you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to message me first I will message you first yeah. like, but um, I don't know guys always try to slide in my DMs it's the worst approach ever Snapchat Instagram is like the worst way to contact me mm. unless I'm already interested in you yeah, and right. you'll ne- like yeah that's it's just not gonna work but yeah like running into me talking to me in a time where it makes sense not well, like well i'm doing bottle service at a club mm-hmm. niggas would love to do that <laughs> like so don't do that um but like a time where it makes sense to like sit down and talk to me have a conversation with me or invite me on a date if i'm interested i'll go okay but, yeah something like that so message to the to the guys comment gang strong do not approach her in the club while she's doing bottle service Facts. and think that you're gonna get a date Facts. unless you really got it going on like exactly you got you got your game tight <laughs> okay? exactly um, even what ends produces the realest dudes, excluding your own ends. <laughs> I'm about to be like Rexdale. I know you're gonna say it's Rexdale, <laughs> but excluding your own ends. Um, and we don't have to stay in Toronto. We could be like, yo, OT. The realest guys. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let me tell you why this is a hard question for me to answer. Okay. Um, I don't really go out of Rex unless it's out of country, <laughs> like <laughs> literally. So if um I'm talking to anyone, my friends, all that, they're all from Rexdale. Like I know a few people outside of Rexdale. Mm-hmm. Um, that I could say are like you know real niggas, but for the most, I don't know. Like I never really got to know anyone in Toronto like that. That's not from Rex, like. That's really what I surra- surround myself with. But, like, I don't know. That's a hard question for me to answer. A small circle? Yeah, I have a really small circle. Like, okay, extremely so small. What ends produces the biggest waste mans? Holy. Okay, let me think. Who's the wastest man I know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> Who's the wastest man I know? Um... Yo, okay, nah, but he's he's okay, he's waste. But okay, I'm gonna say I don't know. I don't wanna I don't wanna shut out no ends me like yo, they're waste fans or whatever. But <laughs> I know a real waste you. Okay. 
or from um I think he's from like Dixon. I think he's from Dixon. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say the wasteest man I know. I'm not saying waste man's, but mm -hmm. the wasteest man that I know is from Dixon. Okay. So Okay. Yeah. That brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest waste man thing a man has ever done to you? Okay. Um Okay, I think okay, this is a few things. So one, if you lie on pokes, I think you're waste. Like that's just there's no coming back from that. Okay. Um and then being a grown man and owing me money. Like you're grown. Wow. Like, that's weird. Like I don't know, that's just what's weird to me. You can't like cuz I'll give it and it's like I'm not the type to like run you down or anything cuz at the end of the day it's just money. It's nothing. Like you know, but like yeah. I just feel like if you're a grown man, would you not feel a way saying like okay, yeah, I owe girl money. Like I owe girl money. That's just like I don't know. I feel like it should feel heavy on your conscience, but it doesn't for some people. So I'm just like, okay, just the fact that it doesn't weigh heavy on you. Your waist, like waste man. Yeah, just that's just waste. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm digging that right there. Um, <laughs> okay. Do you feel any pressure on the gram, like comments, all that type of stuff? Because I know me myself, mm -hmm. I've learned to get around getting in my feelings mm -hmm. when somebody jumps in my comments and says some real shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm still working on it. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so how how do you deal with comments and stuff like that? Um. Okay, it used to bother me. I can't lie. Mm -hmm. That shit used to like, eat me alive. But like now, it's like I'll get a one-two fake accounts, and they'll be like, "Oh, you're a whore." And I'm like, I'm not a whore, so I don't care. Like I'll delete it, or sometimes I'll leave it. Yeah. I sometimes like I'll entertain the bullshit. It depends on my like my mood. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Sometimes I'll entertain the bullshit, and I'll be like, okay. Your Dukes is a whore, like, you know, some <laughs> shit like Clap that. Back. Yeah, like you know, but like I really don't like. I don't care to entertain it. I really don't like. Um, people slide in my DMs all the time on some fake accounts, and then they won't even just talk shit about me. Like that's one thing, but they'll talk shit about people that I surround myself with or whatever. And I'm like, I'm just gonna delete it because, mm. like, I don't know. I'm super like protective over my friends and stuff. Like, yeah. if you say something about my friend, I'm like, I'll defend that more than I'll defend you talking about me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, like. Shit like that, as long as I know it's not who I am, I can easily get past it. Like, it's like mind over matter. It's like it doesn't really even, it's just, it just doesn't hold weight in my life. You're not anyone that's close to me. Yeah. You don't know the situation. Like, you know, you're just from the outside in looking in. Same thing I said about how um people look at my Instagram and then automatically, like, come up with shit. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how it is. You're just like, all right, it's another person. What's the craziest DM I ever got? Not just in the way of, like, trying to be cat you you know what mm -hmm. i mean or trying to talk shit to you but like trying um, to holler at you kind of dm like mm -hmm. whoa dude <laughs> um i think i don't know, i still feel like the craziest kind of dm you can get is like a dick pic like that's just like whoa like you receive dick pics uh, yeah i wow. got a lot of dick pics yeah if i go my dms right now there's probably dick pics there um i get that's a lot crazy. of dick pics it's horrible I don't like dick pics at all. Like, I won't even ask my man for a dick pic. Like, <laughs> so... So unsolicited. Yeah. Just, just, boom, just... Like... No, I'm not, I, actually, not unsolicited. I mean, not, hey, what's going on, Taylor? No. Um, You know, I really <laughs> like you. Boom, here's a dick pic, which is also weird. It's weird, but it's but like an like, approach. <laughs> like, you, you can get in there. Like, no. <laughs> you kind of eased it in. Yeah, no. Nah. You're, you're saying yeah. just like... You open a DM and bing, there's a dick in your face. It'll be like, you make me so hard, baby. Dick pic. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Good to know. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean wow. shit. If I can help out, I can help out. Fuck. Like, <laughs> that is crazy. I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to switch gears again. We had a crazy year, and I've been asking this to all my guests on this show, The Six Views, as well as on the We Love Hip Hop podcast. Mm -hmm. It's like a, I'm trying to put together a collage of different answers that we can have that maybe one day we can maybe get a solution from. Mm -hmm. So, for example, last year we had like our craziest year in record history of gun violence. Okay. Right? Um, they said it's the biggest, um, the most amount of um, gun violence since 1991, they said. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? So my question to you is, what can Toronto as a whole do to reduce the gun violence for 2019? <clears throat> um, I think that 
we all just need to be aware of the bigger picture mm -hmm. and understand that we have a lot going on as black people especially we have a lot going on outside of um the politics outside of like oh you're from here i'm from here or whatever shit just so much deeper than that there's like yeah we're beefing with each other we're also beefing with the man the white people we're also beefing with police like we're beefing with everyone like no one wants to see us win yeah. so it's like you're we're all out here saying okay you know what i don't fuck with this guy because whatever you're literally killing people because of where they're from like like yeah there's there's politics that are deep i understand that mm -hmm. but um it's like i feel like we should just all kind of like i'm not saying kumbaya because it's just never gonna happen obviously yeah. but i mean like just focus on bigger things like we don't have to entertain the bullshit really like if we have to if we come to a point where it's like okay do or die then i understand that mm -hmm. but for us going out of our way like trying to find the problem i don't feel like we have to do that like just stay focused on what we got to do get your money boss up and get out like i feel like everyone's just so close-minded everyone's like living in a box but they don't know that they're in a box like you know what i mean yeah. like so it's like just travel bro i always tell people to travel like just get out and go somewhere go to anywhere the cheapest place go to cuba it's just mm -hmm. like eight hundred dollars like i was just saying <laughs> yeah. i was just think i'll never go back to cuba but go to cuba really though like go anywhere see someone see other things have conversations with with people that have never been in like a hood like in a city but like been in poverty like you know what i mean yeah. like have a conversation with someone that's really been struggling their whole life like you know what i mean yeah and then someone that has never been there like understand both sides of like the world both sides of life like and just i don't know just get out get like see something new because everyone's so close-minded everyone feels like this is it it's not it there's way more to life than gun violence and killing each other than mm -hmm. beefing over houses and homes and streets that we don't have no ownership on facts yeah super facts that's really great advice right there mm -hmm. um another piece of advice <laughs> that word. no jewels those are super jewels right there <laughs> um how do young women because like there's a lot of pressure for on young women right mm -hmm. the gram how many likes can we get you know what i'm <laughs> saying like all this different stuff that's always coming at everybody right mm -hmm. How do young women gain confidence? Like, because I can see your confidence. You know what I'm saying? You're sure of yourself. You know where you're going. What can you tell for young girls for them to get that same kind of confidence? Um, okay, one, don't look for confidence or justification from anyone else. You got to find it within yourself. Um, be comfortable with, like, who you are as an individual. You don't have to change nothing about yourself. If you do, however, see, like come to a conclusion where you feel like okay you know i really want to change something about yourself go for it and like i'm never ever against anything like that mm -hmm. but i do feel like you really have to appreciate everything about yourself before you can say okay you know what i need to change something about myself because yeah. you'll never be exactly content like you can go to the doctor and get so much shit done but at the end of the day you're still gonna find something else to nitpick about yourself so it's like just find it within yourself and don't go on the gram stay off try to stay off the gram mm. and read a book like for real because half of the girl half of these girls don't look nothing like they look like in on on instagram or yeah. wherever you may be looking at them like half of these girls don't look the same in person trust mm. me and half of these girls are dumb like no offense <laughs> but a lot of them are really like slow and so it's like you're looking up to this girl that you've never met you never come, came across. You never sat down to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And honestly, they might be on the ground flying here and there and um, showing cars and houses and all this shit. But in real life, they might not have none of that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, it just might be shit that they posted. Yeah. So it's like, half of you guys are doing way better than the people that you see on the internet. And just like, just be understanding that, you know, everyone's process is a little bit slower than the next one. And yeah just stay just stay focused on you and your goals and like just don't let the gram eat you up because it's very possible but yeah dope 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 and for women trying to get into modeling mm -hmm. what advice can you give for them to like the paths of getting into modeling um uh fuck okay <laughs> getting into modeling just just get up and do it like a lot of like with anything in life, though, 
not just modeling but anything like you could sit there and you could think about it a lot I have this problem too I procrastinate a lot mm-hmm. you just sit there and you think like okay you know I'm gonna do this or by this year I want to by the end of this year I want to do this I want to be here whatever but nothing gets done unless you're getting up and doing shit like and then also be open-minded be open-minded but not open-minded to the point where it's like <coughs> you won't put your foot down like you got to be able to say okay you know what I'm not comfortable with everything yeah and so like make sure that you have enough confidence to say like I'm not doing that or like you know whatever the case and don't do everything or anything for money money is not it, it will come and it go it will go yeah. you'll be broke one day and you'll be up the next minute like it the shit just comes and goes but yeah just like i don't know be confident if you're really gonna get into it go hard don't go in it and then slack off like be about it yeah yeah okay okay with everything that we've spoken about here today in our, mm-hmm. in our interview and you know all the different you know moves that you've made already what do you have coming up next um really i'm really focused on the hair thing right now mm-hmm. to be honest um uh as far as like the modeling thing i feel like i'm i feel like i would just use this to like branch off and do more businesses like yeah. you know like it's really just like an image type thing so that i could like i don't know promote myself like my other ventures like my other business ventures i don't know like hair is just really like what i'm like focused on like that's my like my therapy in a way so yeah that's why i want to put most of my energy in okay okay mm. dope 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 <laughs> Well, I really appreciate the jewel that you dropped for us here today. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We had like a really engaging conversation here with Tay Lee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, you got your head in, in the right direction. Thank You're you. very focused. You Thank know what you. I'm saying? I see a lot of big things for you in 2019. Mm-hmm. Straight Thank up, you. straight up. Right? So thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. So Tay Lee, <laughs> six views. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how y'all doing? Don't forget to like and leave your comments below. And if you like videos like this, as well as others on our channel, please remember to subscribe to the channel as well as hit the notification bell so you'll know when we're dropping new videos daily.